Hello, let's talk live. First time ever doing it. No intro, no music. Just gonna go into this. Um, <laughs> I just, I don't, I, I don't know. I didn't really have a vision of exactly how I want to do this. So I'm just gonna do it like a podcast slash talk show. Just gonna go through uh, all the games and everything of E3 2018. I've had this in my brain for a long time to do this. So let's, uh, let's get into this and do it. Um, I'm going to end up using to just to keep everything in line here and get most all the games. So these pretty good lists, IGN uh, came out with a pretty good list right here of all the games that are confirmed and then also games that are rumored. And I have actually three games on my list that I do not see in this list that, uh, well, okay. No, I got, there's one of them in, on my list. Um, a few games anyways I want to talk about uh, that are on the rumored list. Uh, anyways, so let's just uh, let's just get into this because it's going to take a while. There is a long list of games on here. Uh, so Adventure Time, Pirates of something or other. I don't even know what that is. Um, I'm not going to go over everything either. I'm only going to go over stuff that I kind of like am into. I kind of like uh, this. Yeah, I'm going to pass on this. Uh, that game is kind of eh. Um, you can already see I got. Oh no, you can't see. I right you. I got my got my tabs all hidden, so you can't actually see what I got going on up top over here. All right. So first game on the list is Anthem, and there's a lot of us that are very excited about Anthem. You know, a lot of us that can't wait to see what's going to go on with Anthem. Um. So a little bit of the backstory that I know of when it comes to Anthem is uh, just recently, Casey Hudson, I guess, uh, he's like half of the development for Anthem. Casey Hudson is a guy who like pretty much made Mass Effect, the original Mass Effect trilogy, really, really good. Like, like he's one that helped make that franchise just over the top, one of my favorites. Um, so he's come back and he is working on half of anthem or something or other and uh yeah hopefully it's going to make the you know the story actually coherent to what they want to be doing unlike uh andromeda was you know all over the place and some points didn't even match up with the original game and uh there's it's kind of a good thing i didn't stream that game um yeah i played you know that was out before i started really regularly streaming um so it's kind of a good thing because yeah, that was I was ah, that was not a good time. Um so I was trying to find yeah, Anthem the game. Let's go to their actual official. So this is the YouTube page for it. Um so this was the old gameplay trailer way back in I can crank this trailer up to four K and whatnot. I don't think it's Hi, actually Anthem. showing on my screen. Uh, I'm just, I'm, I'm a, uh, that guy's gonna be talking over this whole thing too. That's why I was kind of. Eh. Hey. The very Star Warsy, um, Star Warsy, slightly Destiny feel to this. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure I did a Let's Talk video on this way back when it, uh, a year ago actually, back when, uh, when it first was there. One one of the things in my Let's Talk video I noticed was slightly a bit of a maybe even a Final Fantasy ish vibe off of this, but the more you go, I mean this right here, it's like uh, you know you, you you got like the um, uh, Mister Freeze visor you know going on and stuff. Uh, <laughs> maybe even Star uh, Stormtrooper. I do have a vibe going. Big trouble. Big trouble. What did you do? So this is going to be one of the guys that you're going to probably get a lot of missions I off from because he's always getting in trouble and such. I know. They said they could handle it. Uh, the we can, we can right. fast forward a little bit here. I think everybody's kind of already seen this trailer a few times over again. Um... The heroes who leave the we're, of the walls of Fort we're all freelancers, which means that we're probably a renegade group. Let's join two players as they head out on an I think they just said that you're on the run. You ready to go? We're not on the run, but you're, you know, 
and trying to stay away from the regular authorities. Slip into a into a cushiony little exosuit. It's not really an exosuit. That's like a tank suit. To tell the truth. The opening cinematic shot right there. All right. This was literally a year ago that that they came out with this. I kind of wanted to check like last year's E3 trailers to whatever new footage that we had now. You're Iron Man. That's pretty much like the soup, you know, the, they give you superhuman abilities, kind of like Titanfall, as you can see right there. That was the first thought that came into my mind a year ago when I saw that. I'm like, oh, get ready for Titanfall. And then this happened. It was like, whoa, whoa. This is pretty cool. This is something over the top of what we've seen. Like, what? You're flying all the way down. There is multiple levels to the map, to the world, I should say. Because it's not really a map. It looks like it's more like a, a full-on living, breathing world. This was, I'm pretty sure this was alpha gameplay, even though it doesn't say it on the screen. I'm pretty sure it was alpha gameplay that we were seeing in this trailer too, so. Let's see what's up here. Um, the world around them is hostile, and threats can come. Hopefully, we'll be able to customize the suits and everything. The unexpected is the rabbits. Every corner. Uh, I'm not sure running solar supplies on this guy. So, you got your abilities down below right there. Um, if you notice down here is uh, kind of like you know the, the regular Mass Effect uh, style abilities down there. So, L3. Or, or uh, left bumper, right bumper, you know, shooting out your different abilities, combo that with a concussion shot or, you know, your super ability by hitting both of them for, uh, for that. And then, uh, you know, like I said, just comboing different, you know, shots in with different abilities and everything. Um, stun the enemy, shoot him in the face, re rinse and repeat over and over and over again. You know, that kind of Mass Effect style uh, that they had going on years ago. Uh, I, I, I literally can't actually remember if we still had that Andromeda or not. <laughs> it's been, it's been a while since I played it. They even touched Andromeda. Um, you know, like, you know, it was forgettable. Yeah, he seems like a problem for another day. Of course they don't want to fight him because this is like, you know, it's like demo. I'll go low. This right here also got like what, and it's all lit up and everything. I know I'm like streaming this at 720, but my God, this looks even in 1080. You know, I'm looking at this stuff in 1080. Streams getting in at 720. Really wish I was, I could do this in 4K, but not limited on technology at the moment. Popping out of the wire, going right into you know with shotgun shells to the face of all the little enemy dudes that are standing around with jobber characters. <laughs> Long fall rooms. So XP for for getting different area or going to different areas and discovering different stuff. Um, now that's another thing too. You just seen popping up on the screen right there. Um, this right here goes back to what they had in Andromeda with different materials. You gotta go through different plants, get materials to build up possibly new armors. Um, you know, customize the color of this or um, different platings, uh, different, you know, looking suit type deal thing. That's what I'm, that's what I'm guessing is it's, this game is going to come down to like customization through um, finding stuff and on different plants and everything. If it's handled well, that can be not bad. If they go very technical with it, that's going to become a very quick pain in the ass. Um, and I hope really hope uh that e3 they uh, um, this e3 that they actually show a lot more of like the, if there is customization in this game um they show a lot of that stuff in the gameplay trailers uh i would like to also see maybe a boss fight uh maybe you know running around a different area um i'm, I'm thinking that we're in, we're gonna end up seeing that during the e ea play press conference this is probably the most Promising title that EA has to to offer. Battlefield Five, I think, is, is. I mean, it's already not being received well. Um, I think it's. I think Battlefield Five is going to suffer from what 
Battlefront 2 kind of, you know, the problems that it brought to everybody's attention with the loot boxes. And there's there's a lot of drama around EA's shooters lately, um, which is unfortunate because Battlefront 2, they've actually fixed up to be a pretty decent game. Um, let's keep going with this. So full on co-op, possibly four player co-op would be nice. Um, but even if it's only two player co-op, that's still pretty cool. I'll take a two player co-op. I think four player co-op would actually kind of wreck this game, you know, on, on the story elements of it. Uh, unless you have a very good, you know, close knit group, like a destiny style group. Um, you see all the trees, you know, getting squashed down and everything. The rubble. All the little embers coming off from the fire. Oh, this guy's never heavy. Time to use that mortar. Game does look great on the graphics. I don't know if this is frostbite or whatever. This is that, that after I watch this trailer and the teaser trailer, that's actually some of the stuff I'm gonna look into. So that's why I'm I uh, I I was kind of saying before I started doing this Let's Talk Live thing that yeah it's probably gonna be like an hour or two of me going over different games that I'm really interested in. Um, this is stuff that I would usually just do on my own time. I figure why not? I'll live stream it. Oh yes, Jared's wrath. Oh nice. Was that a loot box? One second. Back here, so boom, boom, boom. Something really cool ability. Awesome graphics. Crystal, and you hear her say, "Oh, come on, be something good," which to me, that is saying that you have kind of like a destiny style, like the gems or the uh, the orbs, whatever, um, the 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 Ingrams or whatever the hell they're called. There, um, that's you know, it's a it's a drop loot system, which. I mean, if you're if you be up to boss, you get a new weapon for it. You don't have to run out and scavenge a whole bunch of materials. You can just kind of get your weapons as you're progressing through the the, uh, the levels and and doing different boss fights. I actually like that system a lot more. I thought Destiny Two when I was running through Destiny Two, um, there it, I was on stream when I did it too. Uh, the uh, there is a vod of it. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, I thought that system worked a lot better than, than having to scrounge around and, and spend extra time looking for parts. Um, a lot of people probably would think that, yeah, it's, uh, you know, the, the more time you're scrounging for parts, the more time you're going to put into the game, but still. Um, oh, yes, Jared's wrath. Oh, nice. Large scale world events like Shaper Storms are dynamic and pull you off the beaten path. The promise of new stories to so discover. active weather dynamically changing active weather that could actually i mean that could mean it's just like uh kind of like a grand Auto game or something where uh the day and night cycle happens you know one person plays the mission during the daytime the other person plays it during the nighttime so you could end up doing one run where you have a huge storm going on you can't see nothing uh your next run clear as day and you, and you go right through Really cool game mechanics being uh, put in play right there. There's a lot of good ideas okay. in this package. Anthem has a lot of good ideas. I just hope the full thing, they can execute the ideas the right way. So, yep, four player co op. It's been literally a year since I watched this video, so. Kind of reminiscent of, uh, of like Gears. The way the storm is handled with this, which is good because gears, you know, it makes you feel like you're in. I mean, you feel this is this is kind of feeling like you're in the middle of a hurricane or something. It's pretty cool. Very nice lightning effects in the background. And I'm pretty sure this is yeah, this is the end of the trailer. All right. So. Um. Press conference 2018 featuring I don't even know what that is. Let's uh let's go over to here. MK Ice and Fire usually always has really high quality videos. 
So this is the teaser. Thirty second teaser. Very nice slow mo. Um, so you are going into a base, four player co op right there. Uh, running into the base, pretty much looks like a Destiny scene. Um, I'm kind of thinking Anthem's going to take a lot of of cues from Destiny, which I mean, why wouldn't they? Destiny is a very very um, successful franchise whether you you love it or hate it there's a lot of people that still play raids you know who would have thought destiny would still be a popular um, thing but those raids you know it kept everybody playing uh, so then that's just that little teaser that they that they give okay I'm not I'm not promoting you K ice and fire know you have very good uh trailers and everything all right so one thing that i really wanted to do next here is and let me here is i want to kind of i'm just going to check the wiki um anthem the game uh let's say wiki Whether this information is right or wrong, uh, it's all right. Worked on. Okay, so let's uh, let's go back over to here. So, as I said, this is what I do kind of on my free time, uh, or actually, well, this is actually kind of like work. To tell the truth, uh, when I was making YouTube videos of Let's Talks, this is what went into it. Um, Assume the role of a freelancer, one of a group of people who leave their civilization to explore the surrounding landscapes. That almost sounds slightly a bit. Yeah, okay. Frostbite 3 um, for the engine, for the game engine. So it is run on Frostbite. Everything runs on Frostbite now that EA puts out. Um, but the freelance thing, freelancer, uh, those, that, just that description right there kind of reminds me of uh, Monster Hunter. A little bit. They're leaving their home planet to go check it. Oh, well, they're leaving their civilization to go exploring landscapes. I almost, I was almost gonna say in Andromeda, but they're not leaving their home planet. They're not leaving their galaxy. Uh, so Drew, any video? So what's his background? What has he worked on? Uh, Star Wars: Knights of the Old Republic. Okay, cool. We. And lead writer for two for the first two Mass Effect games. Da, 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 da. 2018, he announced he was once again leaving Bioware to focus on his in, own independent work. Ah, man, three later, three years later in 2015. So he's probably actually worked on this game. I'm thinking he definitely, yeah, he later started working on Anthem, a new game developer to do. He announced so after. Now that Anthem's written and they're just working on gameplay stuff, now he ha he's actually left the company once again. Uh, pretty sure. Uh, I heard something that. Um, pretty sure. Uh, yeah, it's it's Casey Hudson. Terrible names. I might be getting that name wrong, but. Pretty sure he actually worked on. Uh, do, 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 do. Bioware. Oh, I can probably find his name in here. Quick. But um, the the guy, the one of the original guys that worked on Mass Effect, I gotta go wait. Gender manager, yeah, Casey Hudson. Do. Uh, fulfilled the same role in the development of Mass Effect Trilogy, a series based on da, da, da. 2014, left Bioware, pursued 2015, Microsoft, joined their uh, Microsoft Studios, creative director, and of course Microsoft Studios ain't doing too much. Now that he had returned to Bioware, replaced Aaron Flynn as GM. So, Casey Hudson, the same guy that made Mass Effect, the, the, the original Mass Effect Trilogy, so good. Um, Eventually became project director of Knights of the Old Republic. Uh, I have not played. Yeah, I've not played this one. I do have access to it on Xbox One. I might actually check it out sometime if Casey actually works on that. 
Um, a lot of people say they really like that game. Like, there's a really good story going. On. If that's the one with the twins, that the the Star Wars game with the they, the like the twins or something like that, they showed it off. E three. No, I think that's a different game. Um, but yeah, that actually that you know that was that's probably one of the, the better received Star Wars game out there. So very good chance that the story and everything for Mass Effect uh, or for Anthem is going to be just as good as Mass Effect. You know? uh, he was working at Microsoft Studios. That's kind of funny. I mean, in Baldur's Gate, everybody loved Baldur's Gate. Remember that that game was really big, Jade Empire. That's another one everybody really, really loved that one. He worked on Neverwhere. Casey, he done a lot of cool stuff. Um, single player and co-op elements in a shared world of the four squad members per team. Teams fight Savage Beasts. Do, do, do. So a possible drop-in, drop-out co-op experience. That yeah, could be fun. I don't know. Uh, E3, which is the next day running on Xbox One X. Uh, vice President. Uh, start maybe a 10 year journey for. I mean, if if they're setting up Anthem to be the next Mass Effect, yeah, 10 year journey for that, for that, like a, a trilogy of Anthem games. I could, I could definitely see 10 years in getting pulled out of it. Um, I'm just going to leave the wiki up. Because that's where I get a lot of information from. Um, whether it's true or not, you know, usually wiki's actually a lot better than what they their rep. <laughs> they get bad reputation, that, and usually they're not bad. All right, so the next game on the list, Plague Tale Innocence. Thinking that's not too much of anything. Um, quick search on it. Plague Tale Innocence Gameplay Impressions There is a gameplay video of it. Uh, on right, what is this? I I have not not heard of this. E three teaser twenty seventeen. Oh, so I probably have actually seen this game. What is this? Heretic! God judged you, and I am your executioner. Ah, looks impressive. Graphics wise. It comes from the rats. Don't touch it. The Inquisitor will give us a reward if we catch the whole family. Jeez. Get him off! Get him off! Ah! If that's possibly run in game, gra uh, in game, and not just CGI, I think that. No, oh, that is that is a game. Like you can kind of tell it. That's impressive. That's like dishonored level of, of rats. Plague tail innocence, huh? By focus, the same ones that just came out with Vampire. Uh, Sobo Studio Focus, yeah. I missed that one last year. I hadn't seen that. Um, is there any other teaser? And that's going to be out for... Might actually check that game out. Um, no no teaser trailer for 2018 yet. Nope. Three 2017 trailers. So nope, nothing else. Uh, this is the reason why I check everything. Sometimes you get little things like that so I'm I'm definitely I'll be uh, during the, the press conferences and everything uh, I'll be keeping an eye out for that oh yes absolutely go um, this is gonna be you already know me when it comes to Assassin's Creed new details maps stuff like that no that's not a that's just somebody talking about it um don't trust anything unless it comes from Ubisoft. Hmm. IGN News. Reportedly leaked. Uh, 
again i'm going to give you a lot of views man so that was the leaked little thing that they had on slow-mo right there doing a this is this is spire kick uh i if we're going to rome and sparta and all that stuff like man it should be a really really cool assassin's creed i've been waiting and waiting and waiting uh let me these Creed franchise future uh we had a movie is there any other movies i'm just i am really wanting television but future oh geez another media that's Creed movie 2016 poorly received by critics i didn't hate the movie didn't love it didn't hate it i was just like yeah it is okay it's a thing um i thought i was really going to hate it though and it turned out to be decent uh embers to do great comics probably going to be a that's extra extra project legacy no that's, um we have that's handheld mobile games that's why chronicle console game Ezio collection odyssey right here uh, prior to do do the website oh geez had teaser images of yet uh, uh, of a yet announced titled Assassin's Creed Odyssey yep so those fools end up leaking it and then Ubisoft turns around and goes yes we're working on this game you know which is all right all right uh, the game is expected to take place in ancient Greece based on the so we are going to the Greeks. Um, ancient Rome, Mediterranean base in Europe. No Western culture, Greek culture. Alexander the Great. And of running him. The power of influence. Yeah, Greek culture, ancient Rome. Man, uh, traveling back to Rome after Assassin's, you know, the Assassin's Creed with Ezio. I don't know if I really care to travel back to Rome, but if we could, if we could do like a Spiracus, Spiracus cross Assassin's Creed, very uncensored, bloody, gory, have adult themes in there, the whole nine yards, that would make for one hell of a badass Assassin's Creed. Um, we just have to wait until the Ubisoft press conference to see exactly what they're doing with the game. Are they going to go kid friendly with it? Um, the the last Assassin's Creed Origins uh, did have actually, you know, there was uncensored a little. A, a, they sprinkled in a tiny bit of uncensored nudity in there. Um, they also had some, you know, uh, eighteen plus scenes. I guess you want to say I don't know, whatever. Um, so they have been kind of going in that direction of making the series for a little more to grow up kids, um, which is a little more historically accurate. Uh, but at the same time, they're going with, you know, sci-fi elements into the game too. Um, myself, I think they should keep the sci-fi stuff out, go with accuracy um, and tell the, tell the ancient history, you know, like the storybooks won't. You know, like the storybooks can't, or the history books, I should say, you know, because the history books can only say so much of of what happened um, <laughs> before it starts to be like, whoa, you got to tame it down um, for the kids. Uh, so, yeah, once again, Assassin's Creed Odyssey looking good. Uh, they also, I, I also heard and read that, let me, um, Real quick, please. Um, supposedly, the game is going to be a lot more different than uh, anything else that's ever been. Talk, talking about the little more grown up themes right there. Um, this game is going to have is where they brought in the RPG elements into Origins. This game is going to take it even further where they, they revamp the, uh, the combat system. 
going to take it even further. They haven't really said how far or which ways. I think it's it's probably just going to be more of a Souls style, you know, system that's actually uh, a little smoother to play because it was kind of janky. You know, not going to lie, the, the control system was a little bit eh. Um, it took it took a lot longer than what it should have to get used to the control system, and then on top of that, the enemies were a pain in the ass to try and fight against. Uh, so I don't know. It's if they go more RPG elements in there, that I don't want to see the game get really technical again. There's a very kind. It's it's somewhat of a fine line that you that you ride when you get too technical versus having something to, you know, work towards in the game when lock and stuff. I think the early Assassin's Creed games did a really well, really good job at that and did it in a really, you know, really well uh, done way of get some collectibles and then you get, you know, costume or that costume. Um, I think, it, uh, the unpopular opinion here, Assassin's Creed Unity I still say uh, outside of connection issues or whatever else, gameplay alone, Assassin's Creed Unity was probably one of the best Assassin's Creed. Syndicate took it and made it a little, it made it feel a little bit more arcadey, but it also fixed the one thing that Assassin's Creed Unity got wrong, which was the, the you know enemy shooting at you mechanic that you could not get around. Um, so. Hopefully, you know, hopefully they learned their lesson with all these Assassin's Creed games. And um, it's been, what, 10 years of Assassin's Creed, something like that. So, yeah, ho hopefully they don't, oh, you know, overdo the technical aspect, but they, they just get a sweet spot. And I think that's what they're aiming for is to get that sweet spot in there to make the game as fun as possible. Also, make it as historically accurate as possible. And then maybe draw back the... Um, the censorness or the censorship and make it a little more you know realistic I guess you, you say and making it a little a little more uncensored all right um got so what what is this so Corsa uh, it's a PC game I'm gonna say this game is a like God view world builder also on PS4 oh Seto Corsa competition so it, it's a racing game well now I don't know if I would this was channel I mean so many Forzes and so many I grew up on racing games so it's like it's a hell of a time trying to impress me with a racing game anymore this ain't showing much yeah this trailer's not gonna show much it's like 30 seconds long okay um the the peggy trailer camera muscle videos so this guy's got like all kinds of information on it when they've only shown like tidbits, pieces of the game. Seriously, some. That looks pretty decent. Sorry, I, I keep forgetting to go full screen. Good graphics. Jeez. You can actually see the raindrops and everything on. Wow. Very detailed. Very, very detailed in the graphics. Um, gameplay, who knows? Okay, well, it's Unreal Engine. That's a decent sign. NVIDIA, that's why it's, that's why graphics look so good. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, it's just like you have to see gameplay of it to really see whether or not a racing game is, is good. Uh, what else we got? Battlefield 5. I've actually done a Let's Talk on this already on Twitch uh, when the first trailer came out. Um, that next game on the list though is one that I am actually pretty excited about. Uh, have we seen any, has there been anything new? 
anything else put out here battlefield for me the way there, there's one reason why i don't get hyped on battlefield anymore it's not from the multiplayer or the gameplay or anything it's not it's not from me playing it it's that the player base drops off um like the majority of the player base drops off and then you just have kind of like the trolls left over or you have people that like okay you might have a map where there's buildings all around and you're supposed to run around the buildings and, and shoot you know submachine guns and stuff that like it's close quarters combat map and people are quick scoping or they're up to the top of the building and trying to snipe downwards and everything and it's just you know it's just gamers mentality I get it um but yeah, it's not fun to play against. Me, it's not fun to play against. A lot of hailstorm on there, I know, because I watch a lot of Paramore and hailstorm. I think that was the quickest damn teaser I've ever seen. Okay, so would be kind of cool is if they took from the other uh, EA game, which is Titanfall, which is probably going to be coming to an end because respawn is no more. I heard. Um, I actually gotta look that up. Um, if they took from respawn and made it where you fly into the bell, <laughs> and you know you you come in flying into the bell, and do what PUBG and Fortnite have not done, and actually make it so you can kind of see inside the airplane. Actually, I think PUBG you can see inside the airplane. Bad, my bad. Pub, you know, PUBG people don't don't kill me. I actually love. I like PUBG better than Fortnite. Oh my god! Now the Fortnite community is gonna kill me. Oh, dead. Um, <laughs> to be able to parachute in into the battlefield, kind of like uh, like you could do in the old Medal of Honor Airborne game, that would be pretty cool. Uh, it'd be a throwback for all the Airborne fans. It'd also be something new to add into Battlefield Five, not just you know. This girl's got a mechanical arm, and it's World War II. How that works, I don't. I I still am scratching my head. Um, you know what? Let, let me let me type something in real quick. Was there can mechanical arms in World War II? Royal Electrical Mechanical Engineers Wartime Memories Project Weapons used in World War Two Small Pistol Uh Infantry art Artillery Tanks Aircrafts no. They had nuclear weapons back yeah yeah here yeah to um Not seeing anything what that would say be a freaking mechanical arm or uh British Army like in World War Two. How about about Battlefield Five Mechanical Arm? There has me more confused. Yeah, feedback is not being or developers or the Hollywood robotic arm um arm versus M four six So a lot of people are just scratching their head being like what the hell is that? Yeah. That this this character is causing so much controversy, so much drama, and at the same time creating a lot of intrigue of like what in the hell is this battlefield game going to be like and then also then you have the other side is why is there a woman in World War 2 eh. eh okay whatever uh so yeah I've I've actually the, the trailer and everything I did a full on breakdown I don't see and I don't see any more of a trailer the, the live reveal was literally just a trailer um, it was an hour and a half for a what two and a half minute trailer yeah okay so the next game on the list this next game beyond good and evil 2 now 
DJ we here on on Twitch, he was going crazy over it, and I'm like, I pl- I checked out the first Beyond Good and Evil. It was it was all right. It was average to me. I I didn't really get too excited over it, and then they showed the trailer like uh they they showed like a behind the scenes demo and the stuff that they were doing in the tech demo for this game was it was just like mind blowing you, you shoot off from let me uh, let me here and I, see. uh character customization and more i think maybe it's this this is a totally different trailer though hold on Oh god, ads on ads. This is the actual, yes, Ubisoft Central. Okay, this is somebody talking about it. I'm not looking for that. I am looking for, well, it's in this trailer anyways. Um, I don't know if Ubisoft actually put up a full-on trailer of it, but uh, staff combat ship maneuvers a month ago, so this is new. I've not seen this ready yet. For another check-in. This time highlighting their progress. So flying off from the planet, going up into outer space, and, 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 and then coming back down with no load times or anything. Is, uh, is a pirate, so we have two kind of I mean, that, that's the awesome. Deck, the ship itself, and uh, the character bring this up. When he's moving and he speaks, when he speaks. And, uh, so good, uh, I mean, that's really good animation. Uh, like, if you're in the middle of combat and you got, you know... We are working on all the mechanics of the staff. We are working on all the mechanics... Uh, locomotion, uh, our, our to me, first thing that pops in my head is maybe there's a combo system on that. Actually, you can also board the ship. Like an old school game combo system. You hit, you know, hit a three button combo and then, you know, time it out just right. Hit maybe like a special move, go into another little bit of a combo. Another nice thing with pirates is that they are very mysterious in Beyond Good and Evil 1. Um, if there's, you know, if, if there's a whole bunch of like pirate stuff in there too, of like customization on your character, like I would love to see you be able to make your own custom character on there and everything. What happened to the pirates? Being evasive is one of the things pirates do best, but the team knows that when you're playing with friends, all content is work in progress. This is still pre-alpha footage. This video is from what a month ago, I think it was. So we have a big speed, uh. and it's really hard in multiplayer to follow each other. At those speed, so you really quickly you will lose your friends, and that's why you have. The There's a good chance that this vi- uh, this uh, this game yeah, might be one of those games that game, you're like, oh, it might be coming out next year. Yeah, Wait, know, hold on, doing, so maybe yeah, the next so year. Hold on, they're still working on it. <laughs> so it's good because so sometimes you, you see some uh, fun uh, fun stuff uh, coming. The development team about what you'd like to see in the game. Go to bgegames.com to sign up for the Space Monkey program. Then subscribe Still not a lot of, of progress being made with that though, which is hopefully we see some some really really good um, progress being made in in the development of that game. Um, for for E three that it, I mean it could be they're just saving it for E three. Hopefully that's that's the case. Gamespot trailers. Definitely recommend that game, Detroit. I'm human. Come on, ads. Oh god, YouTube ads are. It's the Beyond Good and Evil 2 team at Ubisoft. This is the same same kind of video. What we got? I'm just looking for gameplay clips here. Our biggest mission when we came back to YouTube, like we got, we really wanted to be great. And we are really focusing on something that I tell the team is a pirate of it and captain, a pirate captain. It was kind of funny too, because when they when they showed the game off the first time, that CGI trailer hit for E3, and I'm like, okay, okay, it looks looks cool, got my interest, but that's just a CGI trailer. Where's the gameplay for it? And then they showed the gameplay, and that's like I said, it was just like, man, I've not seen anything to this level. I've seen I've seen other games do stuff like that but not to that level of detail um so i mean there's not a whole lot a whole lot to check out just quite yet um let me let me check this a little bit of a wiki here uh gameplay and development single player co-op play support all right that's good some co-op in there 
Uh, development. Uh, let's see here. Two second leak trailer appeared two thousand nine. So this this game's been in development for a long. Time. Original release in two thousand three. Uh, yeah. Cult following. Sequel being as two thousand seven. Nintendo Power. Uh, French Magazine. The the same guys that leaked the uh, Assassin's Creed stuff. Uh, Pre-production for a year. So this game has been in production for a long time. Uh, the reported trailer had been all recorded within the, the... Yeah, okay. Um, three during... So confirm that 2008, 2009 trailers were from initial work as a narrative sequel to first game, but during development they opted to change direction and make it a prequel. Thus, the work previously shown was a technically different game. So this, okay, so the first game maybe it'll matter, probably it won't, but it uh, sets up a world, I guess. First game's a world builder. This game is going to over overdo that <laughs> uh, just, uh confirm not the case the space monkey program was uh that's gonna be on all systems yeah the game play development stated made more accessible to the new generation of players well you got nice hardware going on right now if that if that was still pre alpha unless they got a actual like beta gameplay for this year's E3. That game is going to be Beyond Good and Evil 2 is going to be a next next gen whatever console. Um, so PS5 and Xbox One X, it's probably going to run kind of rough. It'll m probably be mainly on PS5 and PC. I'll, st I'll, I'll call it right now. Um, Windows Store. Who's the developers behind it? Young Good and Evil 2, U Ubisoft. So it'll be on the, the Ubisoft uh, shop. The, the main thing will be Ubisoft shop. And then also for console guys, it'll probably mainly be like PS5. I'm going to say. The game ain't going to come out until, until the next PlayStation. Um, Xbox One X will have, you know, their port over there too. Uh, man. Promising stuff, but I don't know about the. I don't have a good feeling about the uh, the timeline on it. All right, what else we got here? Call of Cthulhu. Uh, is it only PS4? No, coming on everything. Or just the game name. Oh. Game. There we go. Horror fiction role playing game. I don't know about that. Uh, don't exactly have. I've been Call of Cthulhu alone. It's going to come up with Alka. Oh, okay. So it's. it's uh, wow. PlayStation. Gonna be on there. Oh, wow. Okay. This was another 2017. Trailer. I missed this one also. What we got? Nine Night Studio. See Margaret. From the way his hands are trembling, the subject's brain is still functioning, in spite of the post-traumatic stress. So we're in like the age of vampire. Sometimes we gain. So, FPS. Oh, that's actually gameplay. Hey, you! Stop right there! You're gonna chase, and then you're gonna get stuck. Ooh. Come on, come back here! Uh huh. Music park ride. Okay. Yeah, that's. I'm pretty sure that's gameplay.
That looks really good. The graphics wise it looks really good. I don't know. What do we recommend in this kind of situation, Marcus? So it's a psychedelic, puzzly FPS game. Bam, yep. Yeah. Oh no. What, time traveling and shit? That's. What the fuck? The live stream. Everything is fine. Wait, what, what the hell am I doing here? It was just a nightmare. I was there. Mr. Pierce, <laughs> I was feeling it. You have to rest. No, but the dreams that they were Only real. time. Did the poke me in the ass? Affliction. Two, oh man, they they put him asleep and he's like, like stuck in a dream world, in like a nightmare. That'd be. Okay, is there a uh, is there a newer trailer? Twenty eight gameplay. It died a short time ago. Killer whales have few predators. And there are no sharks in these waters. What creature could possibly have done this? You can't understand. You're not sailors. It's a sign. There's something coming. Something Reminds me of uh, the graphics of Dishonored. Once, once again, another game remind me of Dishonored. One way or the other. Vision is just a joke around here. That suits me fine. Oh. Okay. Flipping over the third person. I like that. That's different. Hey, be careful. Careful where you're hawking the loogie. <laughs> Let's get him another drink. He's dry. The sense of that? Okay. The miraculous catch. Apparently. The most significant event of the last 80 years. Hmm. Fascinating. Charles Hawkins was a heavy... Okay, so this is very much of a story. There's not too much action to this game, it doesn't look like. It's just a, it's a puzzly, um, psychological... ...the graph of Charles and Sarah. Who could be sleeping in this... This painting is from the Hawkins... Oh, it's just a lot of talking and... Ooh, it's spooky. Oh, nothing happened. Yeah, okay. Sinking City? What's that? Oh, you got you got my attention. What is this? Sinking City. Luckily, we have a few great opportunities to do it, with gaming events like GDC and EGX Rest being right around the corner. Oh, so they actually added more to the game. They actually add Making some a demo is always a challenge. You know that by now. Our goal is to show as much diversity as possible. Diversity of our gameplay so features and cultural aspects as well. For these purposes, and also to introduce an experience. Literally the game mechanics, that I just watched. A completely this is actually line. the new version of it. So let's now. jump back to November when our work began. Our narration team comes up with a story of a missing person. Depends on the kind of job that you're offering. My husband. 
Harry Evans has disappeared. It ties together our gameplay features as well as that Lovecraftian lore. At the same time, our concept artists and level modelers start working on the gameplay area. Hmm. The quest is designed to take the player across different city districts, rich, poor, the harbor zone and the others. At first, the plan was to put together a small separate map just for GDC. But we quickly realized we didn't want to make something we would never use in the future. So we agree that the quest should take place in the actual city. The problem is our full map is far from finished. It already has streets and buildings, but is lacking those small details that make a city feel alive. To negate that, we decide to border off the gameplay area and spice it up a little. Add points of interest, vehicles, landmarks, and of course our monoliths. So now we have a more or less finished and polished part of the map that we can use in our final product. Things are going smoothly. Obviously, different bugs and glitches keep popping up like crazy. Sometimes the hero wears two hats, sometimes the floating objects stop being floaty, and don't get me started on strange collisions. But oh, we always manage to yeah. fix them in no time. However, there is one big problem that, that we have struggled to solve for this months. Lighting. Thing. It works great, yet we still cannot pinpoint the right tone and colors that we want to use in the sinking city. To solve that problem, we reach out to professional photo artists in Kyiv. They help our team find the right color scheme, inspired by the works of Caspar David Friedrich, James McNeil Whistler, Gregory Crutzan, and Very other cool. prominent masters in their fields. Also, during our numerous play tests, we realized something. Our quest line is intriguing, but very linear. And that's not something you'd expect from the developers. Wow, that was that one of those old... Up their quote -unquote strong and non that, that was one of those old silver 360 controllers with a little transforming D-pad. Yeah, I had one of those. The D-pad was... That's interesting. Like, they, they went totally a different direction with it to try and, like, make the game even better. That's off to you, because most people just try and struggle through and make a half-ass game. Uh, definitely, definitely I'll keep an eye out for that one, too. 3-3. Call of Cthulhu. 11 months ago. That first trailer came out. Hmm. Yeah, well, yeah, you're... Um... Boy, so th this this first trailer kind of makes me think of like a, like a less um, action version of Hellblade or something, um, and then and then this this other trailer makes me think of like Fallout. So I don't know, could be could be some kind of cool stuff going on right there. Um, definitely a game. Uh, as well as we got Black Ops Four. This is a lot of games. Jeez, like I am, I think I'm, I'm what? Not even a third of the way through, and I'm already like, holy shit. Ah, Black Ops 4. Catherine, is that? No. That, whoa, that's. That's that one where you, uh, you have to do the puzzly stuff and then. And the girl's trying to always get with you. Animated shit. Uh, Black Ops 4 is going to be... Definitely going to be different. Um, I can dive into that a little bit. I used to play every single Call of Duty game. Uh, Call of Duty. Black Ops 4. Ops 4. All right. So let's get into this real quick. Okay, first off, right here, Rainbow Six Siege, Razor Wire. Black Ops, weapons free. Then we have a lot of... It does look fun. Like, I will say that. The game does look fun. Um, bringing back old characters and everything, like they said during the reveal of it. I mean, it's 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 Call of Duty. They copy and paste damn near everything. Um, especially uh, Treyarch. I know a lot of people are like, oh my god, Treyarch is my favorite company ever, but they're copy and paste ours. They really are. Pushing on me. 
think that's Run to Jewels on the soundtrack. It's pretty good. Every shot counts. Okay, well, we all know that sequence that literally is uh, Advanced Warfare. That gun was one of the main guns that you got on Advanced Warfare. Um, actually, I think it's it was also in um, Infinite Warfare, too. So that gun being brought over first. So this is all 5v5 mode. 5v5 mode is literally Rainbow Six Siege, and the reason why it is that mode, uh, well, in so it's it's the gameplay of Call of Duty, but with the styling and theme of a Rainbow Six Siege. The reason why? Because Rainbow Six Siege has been a lot more popular than Call of Duty lately. Um, that's that's what I've seen, you know, with tournaments and everything else. Uh, of course, also Overwatch is a big, big element in this game too. Um, you know, the the elements of the hero shooter are definitely prevalent in the uh, in the five v five mode. Yeah, the old the, the fish physics return, the AC one thirties return. That's like some old Advanced Warfare stuff, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure it's Advanced Warfare. Either that or it was Black Ops 3. And of course the shotgun montage for the little kids that want to get the clips. That was interesting, that, that uh, cross grenade right there. Uh, whoa. Oh no. Whoa. Holy Jesus. I just clicked on the wrong thing. Damn it. There we go. Um... That, that, I'm, you always have teams that hunker down the map, and of course, uh, you know that they're going to make the three route maps for choke points, and then people camp out the choke points, and people get mad if you don't camp out the choke points, and it makes it very boring. Um, so having gear like that, of course, that's what that is promoting right there. Is you know, you come down the choke point, it's going to be Dead Man's Alley. Tomahawk. All the stuff that Call of Duty's been doing for years. It's like literally every single troll moment in Call of Duty. Eat this. That's what they're showing right now. Simtex. The, the throwing knives. Tomahawks. Whatever. The only thing you're missing is RCXD. You, you got your, your quick scopes in there. The dogs were in there. Literally every single thing that has been memed in Call of Duty history is in this game. Reveals, reveal from trail. Yeah. Um, of course, Drifters got a bunch of stuff. Zombie mode reveal trailer. Fears and monster. Again, the zombie mode. I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't even know if I'm supposed to be doing this on Twitch. <laughs> doing all these YouTube videos. So, story mode goes in. Ba 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 ba. And it's like For Honor meets like Assassin's Creed Origins. Give them credit to trying something new, but. I don't know if this really fits Call of Duty. It would have been actually a lot more interesting if it wasn't even a zombies mode. If it was literally like gladiators versus gladiators in in Call of Duty style, but you know that they're they're not going to make something new. You're going to take what they already do all the time. They're going to just kind of oh, and then the Resident Evil guy comes out and he's like, oh hey, how you doing? Yeah, I, I can transform, like I'm you know uh, Nemesis or something. Uh yeah, yeah, Blops for is. I'm, I I want to try it. Um, the the big thing, which none of these videos, none of these people will say. Um, nobody is going to talk about the online netcode, and that is the the main reason why I stopped playing Call of Duty online, uh, because the online netcode is just 
got so trashed. Like your connection, the server. Fuck's sake, man. You just, and that it just kills the game. Death Stranding, that is going to be, you know, let's just go on to Death Stranding. Um, enough of Blobs 4. I'll, it, Blobs 4 will definitely, well, I can't say definitely for sure, but I'm pretty sure Blobs 4 will be on this channel, on the live stream and the beta when that comes out. Um, I do have an urge to play Blobs 4. It's just I'm not not hyped for it. Uh, Death Stranding, any, any new trailers for that? 2017, 2017, 2016 trailer. Nothing new of that. I'm I'm not watching the trailer over again for that. I've seen that trailer like Death Stranding is gonna be it's gonna be a psychological thriller, but it's gonna be definitely different than anything else that you've played. Um there's a reason why there's hype behind it because it is gonna be like a triple A game. One way or the other, that game is gonna be a triple A game. I think Resident Evil seven style of a triple A probably what Death Strand turned into. Um, maybe it might also be the quick time event game because it is a PS4 exclusive uh, which means it'll be like a Quantum Dream, David Cage uh, Beyond Two Souls Detroit Become Human style game which I would love to see that too you know for Norman Reus being the uh, main character that would be right in his wheelhouse of acting instead of trying to be a, like an action video game star yeah um, Defenders Quest, Nintendo Switch. I'm not. I don't own a Switch, and I don't plan on owning a Switch, so I'm just gonna probably get past that. What is uh, what's what is Dream? Let's see. Uh, well, that's not. That's not. No, 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 not Fleetwood Mac. What is this game? Dreams. Oh, it's a kitty game. Okay. Um, like Sackboy or something? Like, what is this? Even I awake? What are you doing it? Will I face the worst parts of myself? I need to listen to that quiet voice. Robots and stuff? Calling me. <clears throat> A lot of different. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's like a. Yeah. Okay. Oh wow. So it's a little big plant, but on a whole different scale. Not just side to side platforming or two D platforming. It's also like you know traveling around the world and everything. That's cool. Guessing that is made by uh, coming soon. Ah, I think I actually maybe did see that. Uh, Media Molecule is that the ones that make these? Who the f Media Molecule? Uh, my former Lionhead Studios employees. Oh. Wow. Okay. So this is going to be their comeback then after Sony shut or uh, Microsoft shut them down. Ha! Microsoft shuts them down. They come back to make a like a little big plant game, and they made a little big plant too. Okay. So they I guess they've been around for a while then. Uh, Sony announced they acquired them. Okay. So that was in 2010. Oh, okay. So yeah, they've been. Minehead Studio. So this was before the studio got shut down. All right. Yep. Okay. So they made little big plans. Uh, Mama Wolf is gonna be loving that because she has been wanting a little big plant game. A little big plant, but way better. Um, it was a carding game. Oh, geez. there was a cart. All right. <laughs> What's the next one? The Division 2. Have we seen any trailers or anything for Division 2? I did really love the first one. IGN. 
Um, IGN, do you have an actual trailer for it? Your family can watch what they love. And get an unlimited family plan with Netflix on us. The sequel, there is no page for it yet. Currently being worked on Mass Entertainment two for E three. And we're still in New York, it looks like. To pick it up. So we're excited for the Division 2, and I'm excited cool. for the Division 2, because Ubisoft has done a fantastic job with their post-endgame uh, progression, PvP, and maybe announced on March 8th. Literally, okay, so Even this is just a hype video for it. Uh, anything from Ubisoft themselves? Nothing yet. So they are keeping that under. Why is it great to jump back in? I would love to watch that, but I, I I've been streaming for an hour twelve minutes, and I dropped one hundred seventeen frames. How did that happen? <laughs> uh, okay, Fallout seventy six. So Division two, definitely high interest in that. Um. Probably end up getting it. Probably end up playing through it. Uh, Division one, I, it kind of pissed me off. There was really no ending to it. Uh, I won't. I won't spoil anything, but there was no ending. And uh, you had to get the DLC to actually play the ending of it, uh, which that absolutely pissed me off. And to this day, I have not seen the DLC because I kind of almost refused to get the DLC. Unless I, unless somebody actually did buy it, I just don't. Um. I'll have to check into that. I don't think I have access to it. Uh, Fallout 76. Absolutely. That's 100% going gonna to be getting that. Uh, Bethesda always making amazing stuff. I love Fallout more than Elder Scrolls. And I know a lot of people are pissed off that it wasn't Elder Scrolls. Everybody wanted to see a new Elder Scrolls game. Um, myself, I'm actually a lot more excited and hyped up for this. The classic style trailer. War never changes. West Virginia. Well, no, I guess that went. Okay, never mind. Hold on. Seventeen seventy six to outside of Vault seventy six. When the fighting is stopped and the fallout is settled, you must rebuild. You must rebuild. To me, that is a very big um, hint that instead of trying to survive the wasteland, and because the way Fallout Four was building up towns and building up your house and repairing civilization and everything. I think that's going to carry over to uh, Fallout 76. And in this one, you are actually bringing the world out of the apocalypse and into like a um, maybe not out of the apocalypse, but you know, it, it's like you're now, you know it's it's not like kaboom and now you're surviving in the world. I think it's this game is going to actually pick up like years after the explosion happens and everybody is, you know, well trained and living in this. Now you're trying to build up farther than you've ever, you know, you've ever built in any other Fallout game. That's my kind of take on it. Um it's not just oh, go out there and survive. It's actually we're going to rebuild. I I think people are going to be really, really pleased with Fallout 76. A lot more, a lot more than just being pissed off it's not always rules. Like a soccer. Hold on, I, I didn't actually. There's like a soccer field in here. Uh, ah, celebrate Reclamation Day. So yeah, it's it's. They they had the day of oh we can go back outside and then probably everybody died and now it's like oh or 
this could very well be that they survived just fine in here and then they went out to the world and kicked its ass. Like I said, building the world back up again. In Vault 76, our future begins. That looked like a different, um, like a more advanced Pip Boy. Maybe, maybe not. No, I guess not. Now I'm actually looking at it. It looks like the regular Pip Boy that you always had. Um, I'm, I'm really kind of curious to see if they do anything more with like the cell phone app, like they tried to do with Fallout 4. That there was no use for it at all. Uh, it, it's a cool addition, and it went with the the little collector's item that came with the uh, the collector's edition of the game. But yeah, much. Uh, What's up next? Seven, Fallout 76, that's going to be a definite must-buy. Division 2, maybe a must-buy. Death Strand is a must-buy. Uh, Battlefield 5's definite checkout. Assassin's Creed, Anthem, all those are must-buys. Beyond Good and Evil 2, when they finally get around to showing, like, um, settled on gameplay of, like, this is, this is what it's going to be like, uh, not just tech demos, then... Hopefully, that'll be a must-buy. Um, Black Ops 4 is a definite checkout. Call of Cthulhu. I got to see more of that. I'm not on the fence with that one. I don't know. Uh, Farming Simulator 19. Uh, Viper, you've seen him on my on my live streams before. Uh, Dad, he, uh, he, he gets into those. I, I don't get it. <laughs> I don't see the appeal. Uh, but, you know, each their own. Farming Simulator 19. Okay. Fear the Wolves. Does the Pay off. The Wolves. For Honor. Why is that on the list? Next season? I, they just got into a new season. What's going on with For Honor? I have been pissed off with that game so many times over again that I, uh, I have pretty much permanently... Focus on Inter interactive once again. Uh, ten hours ago. This is brand new. Chernobyl died in ages past. Uh, the artifacts of humanity are all that. Re no way. Is this a Chernobyl game? No. That is like the one place in this world that freaks the fuck out me. I've always wanted to like have a game of it. And the wolves. Oh my god. This is this is talking to me. Wolves everywhere. Fear the wolves. It's in Chernobyl. Something that I've always wanted. Peggy 18. Whoa. Boss top games. This is going to be like a survival thing, isn't it? God, you land in Chernobyl. With an axe. This better not turn into Fortnite. Please don't be Balrael. <laughs> Oh, the gauge. My God, this is actually looking better in Fallout. You are not. No, you're not going to tell me this is a Battle Royale game. Oh, jeez. Oh, Run. the wolves. Run! Oh, no! So there's cult people or something? Ooh! Taken down. My mass now. Okay. A breather mass. You have the the gauge going off in the back. Uh, that's kind of a little bit of um of uh subway. No, no, out no. Last what the hell is it called? Oh shit! The, uh, you know what I'm talking about? The damn, the Russia game where you you're fighting werewolves and all that stuff. My God, what is it called? Uh, I have I literally have the game cover right there in my brain. Dying? No, it's not Dying Light. Um, jeez, Russia. Da, da, da. Yeah, can't think of the game's name, but you know what I'm saying. 
I'll think of it in like five minutes. <laughs> now he's oh shit, there's people. This is a damn battle royale game. I mean this this is this is very intriguing if it is. This kinda looks like battlefield in a way. Like they just had Vampire that came out from Focus and and then this is they're going full, full on first person shooter. Running with the wolves. Ooh, that wolf was very vicious. Fear the wolves on AMC. <laughs> it looks like the Walking Dead logo. Steam early access this summer. Hmm. Focus Unreal Engine Vasta. Is it PC only? Uh, no, it's going to be on console also. Damn. I wouldn't mind checking that out. Maybe. Maybe I will. That's that looks pretty cool. Uh, four iron. What is... So what's going on with four iron? The game that I... Or I never would play again. Uh, present and future. One week ago. As present and future. Of the game. We can explore so many aspects. Okay. Game, launching it, and then you were just witnessing the. Re we had four big events. Starting at. Uh huh. I think. The year two, Some pretty moves. much. Something the community paid every no. couple months for work. How long has this game been out? The record is you on Twitch. It's in relations, and that's. Re and that's why we oh, see that go live on, on the Ubisoft. Game. Oh, they're talking about the 1v1. Heroes, and that's why we've added the arena mode. <laughs> you can configure the boat to perform specific chains of movements with these characters that you're not necessarily good fighting against. Helps you become okay. better against this okay, guy. Full screen again. They're embracing the Soul Calibur aspect of the game, finally. After the launch, we discovered some issues on the connectivity and the stability of the game. And even by improving and fixing a lot of bugs, we never reached the quality we wanted uh, for Honor to be at. The team really believed in yeah, the Yeah, there's some, there's the definitely server, server issues with it. the online architecture, they had to rebuild everything. Ooh, now, the okay. quality of life for a player is much better. There's no more host migration, for example. We don't have hmm. any more NAT management. So if you're a red NAT, yellow NAT, green NAT, we don't care. You're playing on servers. We reached a ceiling with our previous architecture. Now, what you're telling me is if somebody has a really shitty connection, I'm going to get connected a lot quicker to those people. Thanks. I just, I... If the game wasn't such a pain in the ass to play. A game to be in. We have some cool surprise. We can maybe show you something. Don't miss it. That sword is possibly Roman? Arabian hero. Crimson Femora. Okay, Arabian. That's that's pretty cool. Um I don't know. Uh with Soul Calibur coming out, that it kills this game. It, it literally like this was the, the only thing that you have Soul Calibur, and now there's an actual Soul Calibur game coming out, so it's like yeah. Who gives a fuck? Uh, four hour anymore. <laughs> uh, once, once, once uh, that comes out. Uh, okay, that. Probably close down there. Uh, Fortnite, of course, getting an update. Um, not that I hate Fortnite. It's just I've I've been playing it and it's it's fun. It just gives me a Call of Duty urge, itch, whatever you want to say. Uh, Galox. Uh, Nintendo Switch Ghosts of this game. This is, uh, yes, this game looks fucking amazing. Um, uh, the announced trailer PG. I think I might have missed this trailer.
to shoot me to 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 shoot me to uh, Japan yeah okay Set it perfectly look at the graphics look at the graphics ah look at the graphics on this that is literally 2K I'm looking at you are one I want this game right now I can see that I want to play this game right now this is remind me of Neo Oh. And you have won, Pagos. The lesser men have called unwinnable yet. Oops. And then there's that. But while you were sharpening your sword, you know how I prepared for today? Why'd my brain go that direction? You learned. I know your language. Your beliefs. That's the enemy talking. Which villages to tame and which to burn? Sub Zero's village. No. So I'll ask you once again, Samurai. Do you surrender? Never surrender. I will chop you down with the flames of my dead people Ooh, you pissed him off he's like ninja Gaiden or some shit right there uh ah, that looks good that looks really cool ghost of tushima 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 yeah i think i got it wow that was actually gameplay right there sucker punch makes that that's good. That's good. Really good. PlayStation. This is the reason why PS4 is my main console. It's my main system I game on now because they have just all the cool shit is on PlayStation. Now. Um, it's it's really weird. Like a few years ago, Xbox. Like I I got so much money sunk into the Xbox, and now it's everything is like the games coming out on on console. It's, I'm just hoping it comes out on the uh, on the PS4. Uh, Greenfall. Greenfall. Greedfall. Excuse me. Uh, Focus. Wow, Focus is making a shit ton of games. They're on. They're they're on point right now. Days Gone. Vampire. Man. Oh, I I streamed it too. Uh, first two hours were shitty. Third hour started getting better for the gameplay wise. Uh, fourth hour the story starts getting better. Fifth hour you get invested in it, and finally by the fifth hour you're like, okay, I kind of like where this is going. I kind of like what's going on. Um, so now that's where I'm pretty much at is like the fifth hour of the game. I'm like, uh, okay, I'm starting to find you know find out. Uh, who's coming to try and kill me? The, the the bosses are starting to kind of come out of the woodworks and everything. I know the main boss and everything. So, uh, anyways, that's Vampire. Now, Greedfall. Uh, Greedfall is something different. So let's see. So this could be one year ago. So this was revolutionary dude. That trailer looks very familiar. I might have actually seen. Focus on their interactive. A spider studio game. A spider. This world is down. Very uh, Assassin's Creed 3 ish. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Okay, I have seen this. I remember this. Yeah. I was like, wow, they're, they're, good. they're going for Assassin's Creed with this. Cat lady. Fucking cheetah. From Injustice 2. <laughs> I'm going to get your ass now. 
Yeah, I do. I do actually remember this. Um, she spawns in a big ass thing that chases your ass down. Damn, man. That's another PlayStation exclusive. Oh, no, it's not. That looks like it's made for the PlayStation. Uh, Heavy Fire, Red Shadow. What could that be? Hmm. You know what? Let's have this. That? Nope, that's not good. Um, this. They're actually a. I don't know what I'm looking at. Okay, there's there was like a blonde that showed up, so uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, publisher of is a bit plot. I don't know what that even is. So yeah, home sweet home side scroller platform. Side scroller platform. Not Motley Crew game. There's a lot of games that that take <laughs> that take titles from music. Yeah, Home Sweet Home. This shit was out already. Is it on the E3 list? I get that. So an expansion pack for it or something like this is IGN though. You know, Insurgency, Sandstorm. All right. So Kingdom Hearts three. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna start. Wrong. Just, just the games that I'm probably going to, that I already know what they are and everything. Cause this is taking a while. I got, there's a lot of games on this list. Um, so Kingdom Hearts 3, uh, sort of, I, my interest is only because, um, my favorite live streamer has a major interest in that. Um, and they've already gone and like played the game and everything. So, uh, that's my real only interest in it. Kingdom Hearts. I played the the original, the first Kingdom Hearts. Really loved it. Um, played it, I think, twice, three times over again. The gummy ships and, and um, running around with all the Disney characters and Sephiroth almost made me cry. It was it was a, a good time. I actually kind of really want to go back and play Kingdom Hearts one and two. I think yeah, they're they're remastered and everything too. Um, more or less for I st I. Picked the game up, the original Kingdom Hearts. Picked it up and started playing it because it had Disney characters in it. I actually liked the. Uh, it was the first time I had ever been playing a game with Final Fantasy characters, and I actually liked the Final Fantasy characters a lot more. Well, it's like one of those things of like, oh, that universe is pretty cool. Last of Us Two, absolutely. Um, I actually want to see is there any other newer. Trailers. There's not. I know there's not going to be. I'm looking it up though to see a year ago, seven months ago. Uh the last one was Oh yeah, Ellie and Joel's song. That's that's a pretty cool video. Uh nope. That's that's uh definitely one of those games and, and one of those trailers that everybody's looking forward to. Ellie is a lot doing that. Um, sooner or later, I will replay The Last of Us on stream. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, whenever they finally announce the release date for The Last of Us, that's a question. Um, pre release. I don't see any really up oh, game will be featured at the E3 event, so there's no release date for it. Second trailer, do, 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 da, 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 nope, no release date for it yet. All right, well, that will be that's definitely on the list of must buys because the first last was it was good. Uh, Little Dragon Cafe, don't know what that is. Mavericks Proving Ground, I say that's a BR game, game with 400 players. Uh, that's gotta be a bow rate. Oh yeah, it's a bow rate. Uh, four times as many players as PUBG. Ah, uh, 
Is there any gameplay of it? Maverick's Proving Ground. Oh, there is epi episodes of development and everything. Um, yeah, I'll uh, I'll watch that off stream. So that's a little bit long of a video. Um, I'll check it out off stream. Maybe. I don't know. I'll have to see what it looks like and everything. Um, I've been kind of getting into Battle Royale games. Okay, Mega Man 11. I'd rather watch somebody play Mega Man. Wait, Monster Hunter Generations Ultimate? What? What? On Switch. On the Switch. So, what's the, uh, the, what's the Switch version looking like? Have they even shown it? Well, they have. Oh, that's Switch graphics, huh? Not bad. That's CG, though. That's CGI trailer. Such a big game in Japan. I liked uh, Monster Hunter World. Oh, there's the gameplay. Yeah, that looks about right. For sure. That looks like a Vita game. Wow, okay. Now that's looking a lot better. Switch X? Different hunting styles. Um, I mean, you can take the stuff out of this game and it could easily translate over to the, the Monster Hunter World game. So, like that's Dual Blade. Um, so, a lot of this stuff could easily be DLC for Monster Hunter World. All the kitty cats. Monster Hunter World, I was having a lot of fun with, and then it got so damn hard. Uh, well, not not hard because I like hard games that are like you know, like Dark Souls and stuff like that. I like, uh, I like those types of games, but it got so frustrating that it became a lot less fun than what it was to begin with. That looks pretty cool for the Switch. For all you Switch owners out there. Yeah, that's awesome for the Switch. They they can use that. They can definitely use that game. And you're seeing on the screen my favorite live stream. Uh, Mutant Years Road. That sounds like an X Men game. Literally sounds like an X. -Men. Oh, that's that game. Yeah, with the. Uh, it, it, it's like it almost it looks a lot like the uh beyond good and evil let's go road to eden gameplay i don't know what to think of this Tron music going in the background. Quack, quack, motherfucker. Mutant Year Zero. Okay. From that cinematic trailer, that looks like it should be a uh, like free to play game. Take a side route, and it's also well lit. You notice there's a big spotlight. Spotlights, electricity. That's a sign of pretty, you know, not wealthy individuals, but more powerful individuals. Mm -hmm. yeah. no one's coming. I like that. I haven't no seen um, many 
turn-based tactical games sort of have this approach before a fight begins, really sort of getting to use, getting to grips with it's the battlefield a fucking and top setting up an ambush. Um, like it's well in advance. It's like a World of Warcraft of type. Yeah, we we don't want it to be a, a big part of this game because uh, a lot. Of My interest went from here to <laughs> like ah, it's not it's top down game. Not my that, that looked like it could have been something really cool. Okay, uh, Ooblets. I don't know what the hell that is. Pokemon uh, <laughs> Rage Two. Uh, that's actually another game I really want to play on stream again. Uh, well, again, but play again and play it on stream this time is the original Rage. That game was a lot of fun. Uh, that was a Bethesda game. Hey, Bethesda made that. Yeah, Bethesda Square Enix. Id Software. Whew. And you wonder why Rage was so good. Um, yeah, fun. Lots of fun. I can't remember if that's back compatible. Did they ever get back compatible? Marketing related to release reception. But um, yeah, definitely, 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 definitely. Rage two. I uh, got some pretty decent hopes for that. It's like, you know, it, it's it's Borderlands without the try hard humor. It's Doom, but not underground in hell. Um, and then it's also like a kind of like a Mad Max experience where you can run around and drive, you know, the cars and everything else, and you have different weapons. You have everything. Cool. Very cool. Uh, Rend says PC games. Uh, Serious Sam. It's gonna, yeah. A lot of people love Serious Um, My nose is like, allergies are acting up and it's feel it affecting my throat a little bit. Uh, in the res Sinking City. But the Sinking City is literally. That is Call of Cthulhu, right? Or is that a different game? I think it's a video game. Da -da -da -da, play step and shoot here. Second. Oh, not. Got it. Damn it, I had that on full screen when I did that. That was my bad. Screen fails. Hello. Uh <laughs> so is that I am I'm actually kinda confused now. Is that I can't believe that is a type. So that is a different game. Okay. Teaser trailer two weeks ago. <clears throat> I think I just watched this teaser trailer called Cthulhu Six Ways of All. Same game. My f whoa, phone is fucking freaking out. What the hell's going on? Tent. Oh, it's still freaking out. Oh my god. What is going on? That, like, this, oh, there was like, there was literally five channels on Twitch that just went More live at the same time. Two years of development and the Sinking City. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll probably check that out off stream a little bit. 
Um, looks interesting. Lincoln City. Uh, Spider Man. That's definitely. And Skull of Bones. That's. Those two are both three must buys. Um, Spider Man. Well, okay. First of all, Skull and Bones. I have not seen this. Some people have not seen this. South North America. This game looks freaking amazing. It's Assassin's Creed Black Flag, but not trying to be Assassin's Creed. Um, this is just a CGI trailer, but the gameplay trailer is a lot of the same stuff also. Um, this game does what Sea of Thieves couldn't. Brings a lot of detail, brings some fun gameplay, brings a reason to do anything in it. It's, uh, it, that's, uh, yeah, Skull and Bones is definitely a check out at least. I don't know if it's going to be a must buy or not. Street Fighter 5 Arcade Edition. So there's going to be a Street Fighter announcement. Smash Bros. Um, end up seeing some stuff of that. I don't know if I'm going to end up playing any Street Fighter 5. Um, see. Uh, uh stay in range, but the surge to making the sequel game was not received well they're gonna say the hell with that I'm gonna make a sequel that was not made by focus home here interactive sorry uh whatever um Okay, that's average at best. Uh, Tetris Effect, I've seen that. It looks like Windows Media Player meets Tetris. You're into that type of thing. Uh, Valkyrie Chronicles, Vampire. Why is that on the list? So, a lot of games that are confirmed for E3 on, on IGN's list is like, I don't know why they're on the list. Kind of weird. Yes, there maybe there's a DLC pack for Vampire. Uh, uh, story, story pack or something. Warhammer, we have a few. That game was. Uh, Yakuza, everybody likes Yakuza. Rumored games, Crackdown Three. I. Uh, when it comes to Crackdown Three, I think that's it's gonna be. Kind of a letdown. I I hate to say, but, I mean, you know, Microsoft needs something. Delayed until 2019. That's not good. Um, anytime they delay something, they canceling it. Uh, and they they also so they showed it literally a year ago. Showed it E3 a year ago. Everybody's like, oh, that's really cool and everything. And also for the um for the Xbox One X hardware and cloud computing and all that stuff. And then oh well, we're just gonna have Xbox One X uh run it on its hardware. And now it's delayed until 2019. Like that, there, that is not a sign for Crackdown. Um, is it videos of that at all? There's literally no gameplay. I listen on it. So, uh, Cyberpunk 2077. Holy, out, but it sounds. Five years ago, game's been in development for a while, huh? Huge news. Is an FPS. You are definitely marketing it the right way. Uh, FPS is coming soon, a month ago. They're like a freaking trailer or anything. Teaser trailer games. That's. Oh, this is the Hitman trailer that they were just showing off. And everybody got pissed because they thought it was going to be MKX or MK11. I'm gonna have to go and download that. And continue. CG Project Red. Hello. I forgot they're making this.
That's how you saw a game. She's an android. Because we have androids running amok all over the gaming industry right now. Half the best selling games have androids in Very intrigued. Very interested to see exactly what this game turns out to be. I kind of remember five years ago. I think I remember seeing something of. Oh, that's just okay. I don't know how I feel about this, but okay. Um, I think I do remember seeing something of this, and I was like, "That's really cool." And then we didn't see anything of it again. Those camera angles. She's going to kick all kinds of ass. Cyberpunk 2077. All right, I love it. To live assholes. When it's ready. <laughs> uh coming when it's ready. Cool. I like it. That was published twenty thirteen, so should definitely be having a trailer sometime. That was five years ago. That was that little teaser was five years ago. Imagine what it could be now. So she went from having this like uh uh what what uh, total recall Be Kate Beckinsale look to vampirish stripperella. Uh yeah. Okay, we'll see. We'll see. Should be fun. Days gone. They just uh they just had the trailer for that. That's gonna be a must buy. Um they they finally fixed it up and looking a lot better. Um the first first thing that you saw of it was this world two five Um Might not look as good on stream but this game looks a lot smoother, a lot, a lot more done up than what it did before. Before it was also like alpha gameplay of it. I think this is finally like a, a, a regular gameplay demo of it. Loser have a run in with RIP the last couple of days. Why? A lot more detail, not so blurred out. Frame rates run decent. But this time they kept asking me. If you knew about it, two bikers, two men. The Ripper called them long. This is supposed to be also full on co op. You ask me, you got a price. So if you want to play with your buddy, boom. You know, same as me. There's a lot of customization in this, too, and everything. Like, this far down, what's going on out there? This is looking good. So many zombies on screen at one time, too. The wolves coming out to get you. You can run out of gas. You have like movie reference scenes like that. So you run out of gas. Perfect. Just perfect. Great. He leaves his bike behind. Game looks fucking. For a little while, it had me, uh, it had me worried. Uh, Fancy Seven Remake. Uh, who the hell knows when we'll end up seeing anything of that? Hopefully, we'll see something. Hopefully, we'll see something again. B three. Uh, Sony's press conference. I. 
me myself, I'm not so much hyped up for it. It's just I know there's so many people out there that want that game that I want I want Sony to have it there, you know. Uh Gears Five, of course. Um it's going to finally tell the tail ending and the rest of the story of what the hell happened in uh Gears Four. Because Gears Four didn't have a ending but which pissed me off. Um Kirby, like uh, Life is Strange Two, there's a lot of people that's gonna like that. Marvel's Avengers Project. There is literally nothing on that um, that I know of. But made by Square Enix. Marvel Ultimate Alliance reboot. Wow. They did that. That would be. Avengers 4 preview as we're watching this. Uh, it's reboot of Marvel's Ultimate Alliance. If it's Ultimate Alliance rebooted. Man, it, and it has that, you know, that really, really high graphic style. Um, maybe some influence from the comic books mixed in there, too. Yeah. Metro. That's the game I was trying to think of earlier. Metro, not Subway. Uh, Metro Exodus, definitely, after seeing gameplay of it and everything, for like, last year, I absolutely, that's a top one on my list. Metroid Prime, never, never played a Metroid game. I don't know about that. Um, NBA 2K19. Probably. I don't think I would get it when it launches because September is so fucking packed with games. But uh, definitely. Uh, I got three three months to finish 2K18. Uh, I just actually started playing that. Uh, 2K18's career mode off stream literally last night. So you'll be seeing some NBA 2K19 on stream very soon. Nice for zombies, of course. Ori and the Will of the Wisps. That's going to be a, a big one for Xbox. Um, probably more or less for PC. But, um, you know, definitely Microsoft needs something. That's something. Ori is a actually really, really good game. Uh, Shenmue. Once again, PS4 getting that really, really big title. Um, Shenmue is long time has been delayed because of course it has wow not been delayed again 2019 deep silver making it oh we'll see how that actually um there's a lot of people that really love those Shenmue games I have never actually played I've seen it uh it, it's fun it's interesting it's cool I've never played it so I don't have a connection to it but there's a lot of people that do so Hopefully that game does finally uh, finally see the light of day sometime in the near future. Shadow of Tomb Raider, that's going to be a must buy. Splinter Cell, my. Oh, Splinter Cell, that one. Gets... Can't wait for it. It's been so long, so long since we've had Sam Fisher back in a Splinter Cell game. Um, my theory, my story theory for Splinter Cell. Sam Fisher is getting ready to retire. He's the last of his breed. He is the last of the stealthy assassins. His daughter, because if you go back and you actually check out um, the Splinter Cell Conviction ending, um, if you watch it over again, you listen real closely, his daughter is like, has all the traits that Sam Fisher does. She's just as good as he is. So he trains his daughter to become the next Splinter Cell, first ever female Splinter Cell. Uh, female character maybe halfway through the game you, you become Sarah Fisher and boom you know it's something for everyone in the game uh, we could use some more female heroes especially a uh, <laughs> a stealthy female assassin that's money right there I don't even have to go any farther than that Spiral Reignited Trilogy absolutely must buy. Everybody needs to buy that. Everybody needs to support Spyro. That is going to be a, a amazing game again in September when everything comes out. But definitely twenty bucks cheaper than anything else coming out in September. Uh, WWE Two K Nineteen absolutely always must buy. Uh, WWE games for me are must buys ever since way back in two thousand six. Um, I've been playing them ever since. Um, that's no surprise. Uh, 
a lot of stuff. So Spyro, going back to Spyro just real quick. Um, the upgrade graphics and everything else, you're going to be brought right back to your childhood. Um, and the game also feels, from what, I've hear, what I hear from the developers, there's developer videos and everything, you can go and check them out on YouTube, um, that the game actually feels a lot like the original games. They got a lot of the original designers actually helping to make sure it does. And some of the voice, uh, actually I think it's all the original cast of the voice actors have come back too. So it is going to be Spyro. It's not going to be a cheap knockoff. Um, it's going to be probably just as good as Crash was. Crash was excellent because it felt like Crash. Everything about it was Crash Bandicoot, the original trilogy. So, yeah. We would get um, just as good as work for this one. Uh, 2K19, I want to see better career mode. No VC bullshit spread throughout. That VC is like a cancer to WWE games. Um just you just need to take it out the vc gone from wwe games make it where we unlock stuff some other way i don't know no loot boxes no vc in wwe 2k19 dumb have uh other news ea announced it's ea sports games sims yeah well we already know that stuff don't make cry yes dmc5 that's going to be a big epic one i hopefully I'm going to have a run through of all the Devil May Cry games on the channel before DMC5 comes out, just like I did with God of War. I'm um, looking forward to that. Um, Pray. Let's see. Okay. Uh, never. I don't know. I didn't I didn't get Prey. Uh, played it. Yeah, it, was, it was all right. It was average for me. Um, I was it was trying to be spooky. I don't know. I I think I'd have to play it over again because I was really tired when I was playing it too. Um, Splatoon, not really interested in that. CD Projekt Red RPG, yeah. Cyberpunk, Remedy. Oh man, is Project Seven gonna be showing off E3? That's awesome. Remedy always makes great, great stuff. Sam Lake, genius writer, love it. Capcom. Yeah, they'll be coming out with some crazy stuff. Da, 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 da. Okay. Um, the other thing too, hardware. There is I've I've seen on Twitter from other uh, Sony employees, no hardware will be shown at this E3. So no PlayStation Five this E3. That's going to be next year, I think, and then it will come out um, 2020. 2020 will be the the new revolution of the next generation of consoles: PlayStation Five, uh, Xbox One X, Plus, Turbo boosted whatever the hell they come out with um the white version of it or something you know like they tried to or what they did with the xbox one s um or the slim version of the x uh or an upgraded graphics card for for a new version of the x or something to keep up with ps5 i don't know um it's it's microsoft they might even uh, you know what microsoft might even have the balls enough to actually say the hell with it and go full on PC gaming by 2020. That would actually be more my prediction. Microsoft goes full on PC gaming, kind of leaves consoles, you know, they're there, but their main focus shifts to PC. Um, PS5, so then it's PC versus PS5, which I know PC will end up winning that, but it will end up being, if you're a console gamer, you are on the PlayStation. If you're a PC gamer, then you're, you know, just as always, you're on the PC. Um, I predict also by 2020, Microsoft will try and probably buy out Steam. I don't think it would be a successful thing, but I think they're, they're going to try something for that um, because of people not liking Windows um, Marketplace or whatever the hell it is. Yeah. Um, you can kind of just see the signs. So, anyways, I have been going for two hours, two hours, five minutes, just talking nothing but E3 stuff. Um, that is literally everything that could possibly be at E3. Is there? Oh, um, and there is actually two more games. Hold on one second. Let me bring it up. So, I talked about Final Fantasy VII Remake. Two games that are on no list, but I suspect could possibly be either this year E3 or next year E3 Resident Evil 2 remake which I that's an absolute must buy 
Um, I love Resident Evil. That's one of my newest favorite franchises that I I went back and I finally got emulators run on, on this PC. I went back and played the whole series and I've literally gotten every single game, played them all except for Resident Evil Zero. I watched somebody else. Uh, you know, I watched it on stream. So it's like, okay, I've seen it. I um, just haven't played it. And the big one that everybody really wants, I don't know if it's going to happen or not, but everybody really, really wants it is Legend of Dragoon, a remake of it. I'm right there with everyone. I want to see that game be remade. It was an awesome looking game for the PS1, and um, it's just, it just deserves a remake. It's actually it's good enough for deserving of a remake, uh, unlike a lot of the games that get remakes in there, just kind of like him. So... Legend of Dragoon. That's my that's my last little E three thing that probably not going to happen, but I'd love to see it happen. Anyways, like I said, I have been talking for two hours straight all about E three twenty eighteen, and then we also have more coverage and the press conferences coming up this weekend. So I have got to rest my voice. I am probably not going to be streaming any games today. This was a this is kind of a test run, a two hour test run of Let's Talk Live. Um, the next, the, the, the next let's talk live that I'll do, it'll probably be shorter. It'll, it'll definitely be probably like 15, 20 minutes. Um, and it's going to be trailer. Um, it's sit down, look at the trailer, watch the trailer. If there's anything to look up, look it up. And that'll be that. Um, this was a first of its kind of stream for me doing like a talk show type deal thing. Um, so yeah, this is, uh, this, this was probably the boring first try. <laughs> um, but anyways, that's it. E3 2018, right around the corner. Um, tomorrow we have another, yeah, uh, tomorrow on the next day, what's today? Thursday? Yeah. Tomorrow on the next day. And then Saturday is the first big press conference. Uh, we have two announcements coming tomorrow on the next day from Sony. Uh, and they're just one-offs like today was days gone they showed the trailer finally of like actual decent gameplay of it i'm like um and then tetris was before that which nobody cared really um except for unless you're in love with puzzle games it's a niche audience uh but tomorrow who knows i mean they could drop the bomb of i mean it would be really stupid for them to do it but uh like like a resident evil 2 remake bomb drops tomorrow uh not <laughs> anyways that's that's gonna be it for me i have got to stop talking i have let's talk myself all out uh social media up top and there are links down below also the video player um if you're watching the vod and you hit that follow button uh you might you, you might see an alert pop up now on the vods if you hit the follow button i don't know but uh, next time i have the microphone on i'll give you a proper shout out Anyways, I got to get going. Like I said, my throat is drying up. My mouth is getting tired. And my brain is, is turned to mush looking at everything and talking about everything. So, that's it. I'm gone. I'll see you soon. I'll be back again soon. A salute to everyone that's out there watching. Thank you. Thanks for the follows if you hit that follow button. And, again, thanks for watching. I'm out. See you soon.